from beautiful northern Vancouver Island, it's John Lovelace's Wings Over Canada. Typically the day dawns up here with a low-lying fog that hangs over the cool water of the inland. We head up to Quatsino, just down channel about 30 minutes by boat. We are in no hurry, the fog is burning off in the warm rays of a west coast summer sun and there's plenty of time to do a little hunting and gathering along the way. Keepers, so you can only keep the males, eh? Okay, there you go. That's a female. Yeah. That's her. That's her eggshell. Right. So they go in. Female. Another female. I hope these big ones are males. Those are dinner. That's, yeah. These Another are the dinner. Female. That's a male. Yeah. See that shape? But he's undersized. All right. Just a little bit. We get him a half year from him. You come back and get him that's next year. That's a male. But he's good enough. And he's good enough. And the thing is. You pinch this one, yeah, and if it's hard shell, right, it's full of meat. If it's a soft shell, he's just got a new shell, yeah, then he's no good. You know, yeah. Now there's a bigger meal. Oh, that's a nice one. But see, he's a little softer. Yeah. That means he's only had this shell for about two, three months. Yeah. It takes him about six months to fill the shell up with right. meat. So he's. But that's good dinner one too. Good dinner one. <laughs> for a minute there, I thought I'd throw it away. <laughs> that's, that's a small meal. Yeah. But that's too small. undersized. Too small. And that's the big daddy. And that's a male. That's a male. Good. He's lost one fight. He said, so he's, uh, he's grown another oh, pincher back. Grown another one. Yeah, Small. Yeah. 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 But, that's, but good. good. They got to be good. six and you know inches. I'm in the inches yeah. scale. Yeah. Let's talk about how there's nobody up here and how you, right? There's not a whole lot of people up here. I mean, August. getting in here. Oh, like this little bay? Yeah, or this whole area. I'm talking about the area now. Yeah, this is... Most of the people, if you saw them today, they'd be on the outside fishing. They'd go out past Winter Harbor. But this inland waterway, there's about 40, 50 kilometers of inland waterway. Nobody uses it. And how do you get up here? I mean, you, you, you can't come in from the Pacific side. You've got to come in this way. Yeah, we drive in from... Uh, uh, there's a turnoff over by Port Hardy on the highway there. Mm -hmm. Over to Port Alice, 30 kilometer drive over. Yeah. Put your boat in, and uh, you get and this, you get all this, and you got Rupert Inlet, Holberg Inlet, Quatsino Sound, right out to the Mahata. You don't have to worry about the open ocean. Something I want to chase down is some history. Okay, let's go to. Quatsino is a tiny hamlet of 91 people. It's located on Quatsino Sound. The village is known to have one of British Columbia's only one-room schoolhouses still in use today. It's a two-story wooden building built in 1935. The area grew as resources were developed and it boasted numerous mines, canneries, a general store, rental cabins, a hotel and even a saloon. The village was a thriving community up until the 1940s when without road access its economy was usurped by its neighboring towns. It's almost as if time has stood still here, amongst the old growth forest. The oldest building on North Vancouver Island is also located in Quatsino. It's a woodland chapel called St. Olaf's Anglican Church, and it was built in 1897. Okay, so what would it have been like uh, in the 20s here? In the 1920s? Well, it would have been quite isolated. Today you can be in town to the road system in an hour, and you can be on your way to the city. But uh, back in the 1920s, it would probably take you a week to get to Vancouver. There was a steamship service that came in here every week or two weeks, and uh, that was pretty much the only way out of here. So it was quite restricted. So you'd have to make your own life. 
You'd have to, yeah. Entertainment was? Entertainment was uh, whatever you could uh, muster up in the way of musical instruments. Some people played fiddles and violins and always somebody that played the piano. And uh, describe this one rental place that's available now. Well, it's, uh, it's peacefully located on a, on a wooded point with a million dollar view. <laughs> you wouldn't have known this place, would you? <laughs> well, yes, as a matter of fact, I do. And it's for rent? It is for rent, yeah. And how big is it? Uh, it's approximately 1,500 square feet. 1,500 square feet, yeah. and how much would it cost to rent this? I would be very happy to rent it to you for $450 a month. What, uh, what I would find interesting is I don't see any street signs or anything like that. So, I mean, what about postal, postal addresses? How does that work? Well, postal ad addresses can be a problem. Um, consequently, most people here made up their own. They're mostly box numbers, but uh, rather than being designated one, we've just decided what number we wanted to be. And what uh, one did you take? I took box 28. Uh, but then you could have just taken a street address. I could have done that, And yeah. somebody else did, and give um, me an elaborate street address. Well, there's, there's one across the bay here, uh, the fellow calls it 24 Sussex Drive. Uh, same address as the Prime Minister. So you can do whatever you like. So you can pretty much do whatever you like, yes. Okay. As long as you use the right postal code. The biggest joy. The biggest joy is the fact that you don't have to lock the door. Um, you have complete privacy from the rest of the world. You feel safe. It's uh, a tranquil place with great natural beauty. It's hard to, to name one thing. There's a lot of things. And yeah. you can come up here and rent that house. Bring your kids up here. And they can go to the one-room school. Mm -hmm. Get them out of the rat race. To an earlier time, a simple time, one-room schoolhouse and rent to, uh, to rents that were back in the, uh, in the 40s and 50s. That's incredible. The residents of Port Alice shared life in a community which was isolated from the rest of the province. But now, with a paved highway and tourists discovering this Shangri-La, the dynamics have changed forever. Are the changes for the better? Well, that depends on who you talk to. But here's a hint. If you're looking for a retirement home in this area, either to buy or to rent, you'd better do it now. I'm John Lovelace. And thanks for watching Wings Over Canada. DVD copies of this show and all 172 episodes of the Wings Over Canada series are available singly or in box sets at wingsovercanada.ca or give us a call toll free at 1-866-909-4647.